I had studied architecture and economics in college, and after college, after I graduated, I took a job working in New York City for a real estate company, thinking that was going to blend together my interests in business and my interests, my creative interests that I had explored through architecture. Um, but that really wasn't the case. It, 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 I didn't find uh, those two things uh, worked well together and I found myself really missing the creative outlet of the studio, uh, the architecture studio that I had studied in as an undergrad. So I started taking classes um, in New York City uh, as uh, continuing education classes at the New School in photography and using photography as a creative outlet while I was uh, working at this job. And um, slowly I kind of extracted myself further and further from the job and did more and more photography. Um, and eventually went back to graduate school uh, at the Mass College of Art and focused in photography there. I didn't necessarily know I was going to be an artist, uh, but I knew I wanted to make more photography and learn how to do photography better, and so that's why I decided to go to graduate school. So my first memories of my art career were drawing in that kitchen table, and my parents encouraged me, and I had uh, colored pencils and watercolors. I just loved to draw and mostly from imagination and sometimes from looking out the window. I don't know if I thought about it as a career or anything. I just I just thought drawing was my language. You know I never felt like I was very good at most other art forms so it wasn't I didn't feel like I was creative enough to be inventing things out of my head the way you need to if you're going to be a you know a painter or a 2D you know someone who does who draws or does printmaking um, or even sculpture and uh, so for me photography was um, it kind of was something that I could I could I could do and um, I also think that photography is um, I mean, it's, a, it's obviously a very technical medium, and I think I was really drawn to the technical side of it. Like, I, I, I always had loved, um, you know, uh, taking things apart as a kid and building them and electronics and, and technology in general. And, you know, that's part of, I think, the appeal to me of photography and also video, which I do as well, um, is, you know, is, is that I'm kind of a, a tech geek. I, I love technology. And so... It's a, it's a way to be able to play with tech and also have that be part of your work, you know, which is pretty, it's, it's nice to have that combination. They were, they were open to me, it's true. When I went to the Rhode Island School of Design, I, I chose painting as my medium, and I started to paint from drawing naturally led to painting. I had a wonderful watercolor set of tube watercolors, Winsor Newton tube watercolors. And then I went to pastels, and I had an easel in my room at home, and I, I worked with pastels. So the move from drawing to painting was natural. And then at a certain point, I went to oil paintings. My father had been an oil painter and a pastel artist and a watercolor artist, so they were around the house. It's great to have art around the house. So the big clue, I think, for anybody who's young and interested is to have the stuff there. Not to so much preach or interfere or tell them that they're doing it right or wrong or different or good or bad, but to have the materials there and let them discover the materials and play with it. So, so after graduate school, um, I, I, I sort of did uh, both things. I, I took I was offered a, a adjuncting position at Mass College of Art uh, doing foundations classes and also some photography classes. So I started doing that, you know, a couple of days a week, basically, teaching as an adjunct. Um, and at the same time, I started trying to do more commercial photography uh, and my own artwork as well. So I was kind of doing three different things at the same time. And um, those things were, um, you know, mutually agreeable. I could do them both at the same time because the commercial work you could kind of schedule when you were available. So you could do that on Thursdays and Fridays and you could teach on Mondays and Tuesdays. Um, and so it was a fairly um, symbiotic kind of, uh, of work, uh, working schedule. Um, and so I probably could have uh, gone sort of either direction at that point. Um, 
but uh, for some reason I, I felt um, more excited about the prospect of getting a teaching job. Um, part of it, I think, is you know the stability of having a full-time job that has health care benefits, you know, which is obviously important with a family. Um, and there's a fair amount of uncertainty when you're a commercial photographer and you work for yourself and you um, don't have you know a steady paycheck coming in a, uh, every month. Um, but uh, I think you know I probably could have done either because I was doing quite a bit of commercial work. I was photographing for Boston Home Magazine. I was photographing for several architectural firms in Boston, and so I'd sort of built a little practice, kind of doing architectural photography, um, a commercial practice. And so um, if I had you know sort of decided I'm going to do that full time and dove into it, I probably could have um, you know successfully built a commercial practice. I think it, it's harder as an artist. I don't think, you know, I've never had a lot of financial success uh, with my artwork. It's, you know, I think the art market is, uh, is very particular and, um, you know, I think in a lot of ways you have to kind of cater to the art market and, you know, the market for the work uh, wasn't um, so strong that it was going to ever, it seemed like, generate, you know, enough money to, to live off of. So the art was always going to be a secondary thing, and I think it was either whether I was going to do commercial work or teach that was going to kind of be the primary source of income. And I think that that's true. I think of a lot of a lot of artists and a lot of photographers in particular. They they have um, you know dueling passions. They they love making creative artwork, but it doesn't necessarily uh, pay the bills. Um, that's a very hard thing I think to achieve as an artist, and so they have to find other sources of income one way or another. I love to teach art, and I love to talk about art, and I love to look at art, and I love looking at my students' work. At Middlebury, I used to work with my students in the painting studio. I used to, after a while, rather than walk around and tell you what to do, I used to start painting. And I did the same thing here at, the, at Kirkland and the Merger. I remember once when I was teaching an advanced painting course that wasn't meant in it, I would start I started drawing right in the painting course with them. I love that idea. I love that idea. And now that I'm getting older, I mean, my hand shakes a great deal, and my eyesight is really poor, I take a lot of comfort in my student work. I, I know it's not my work, but I fantasize that it is. <laughs> I love the notion, I know it's not the truth, but I love what makes me feeling happy about it. So I've always enjoyed my student work. I've always just I walk in and I look at it and I roam around and I look at it. And it's not so much that they paint like me. A lot of times they've shown me different ways that they visualize and think about things. It's a way of someone who's not very expansive to expand my vision is my student, the student's work. And I do call them my students too, which shows how um, oh, how, uh, uh, how uh, possessive I am about art. I think, I mean, I think technology um, provides us with tools to make our work in different ways and sometimes to make it more easily. Um, but for me, it's it's just that it's a means to an end. It's a means to uh, as a way to maybe express ourselves creatively uh, in in you know in different ways than we were able to without that technology. Um, but it's really just a tool. And so for me, I'm always thinking about what the best tool is to express an idea. And so when I work on a project, and I'm deciding between you know. Uh, analog film photography, maybe some kind of digital manipulation or video, uh, sound, uh, all those things to me are different different um, mediums that we can use as a means to an end, as a means to some kind of an idea or conveying, communicating something to our audience as artists. Naturally, since I'm old, uh, I have uh, uh, very uh, anxieties about it in, in certain directions, not as a tool. And certainly for a while I was using the computer a lot before my eyes became a problem. My anxiety is with sensual deprivation. 
Um, the thing I love about art is that I use my body, my hand, and I use my eyes, and I use my sense of smell. When I'm in the printmaking studio working with my students, I said, do you smell the acid? And do you smell, and you see the bubbles coming up? And do you feel the temperature of the plate? Do you feel the surface after submerged from the acid by taking your fingers and rubbing all over it? I love the idea of touch, feel, smell. That's what art to me has always been about. Smelling the different oil paints. I could smell the difference in the inks between burnt sienna and bone black. I say, do you smell the difference? The separation from the senses, the separation from cold and warmth, you know, feeling the coldness of his ink plate, feeling the, the brush stroke streak across a textured surface, uh, uh, the pastel dust getting all over my hands and all over the, <laughs> its messiness, its, uh, it, and its deep, profound, primitive. The things I do go back to the very beginning. There was one book I read talked about caves in uh, West Africa on the coast, the Atlantic coast, and on the caves were chalk marks, semi-drawings, drawings in yellow ochre on the cave, and the author said this is the beginning of civilization. Now I'm sure it'll go on, and we live, we're going to live in a world where we go out into space, and there isn't going to be this, the, these, uh, this uh, wonderful sensual world I live in. Maybe it'll be a different kind of sensual world. There's so much I see now in movies and films that are all zoopy, spooky, crashing lights forming around, which may, it might, it might be the new world. But for me, uh, I'm anxious about holding on to the smell, taste, touch, feel. I guess the term is touchy-feely. Um, most people these days have more than one career. So, you know, you can think that you might want to do something when you graduate, but it's pretty likely that you'll do that thing and then you may decide it's not really how you want to spend your, the rest of your life and you'll just decide to make a career switch. And I think a lot of times it's not, it's not necessarily easy to make a career switch, especially a very radical one. Like I was kind of going from business to art and that's a pretty difficult shift. Um, and I think in those situations, going to graduate school is a very good decision because it, it's, it can facilitate that shift. Because when you come out of graduate school, you're kind of on equal footing with all the other people coming out of graduate school. And no one really cares whether you did lots of artwork before you went to graduate school or lots of photography, or if you, you know, just have the portfolio, the work that you developed basically in graduate school. Um, and so I think, think that graduate school can be a way for people to kind of continue their education after Hamilton and uh, can be a way to shift gears and fine tune or focus your interests in, a, in an area that you know, is at a much deeper level than what you were able to achieve as an undergraduate student. I didn't study photography as an undergrad, I didn't study art, I studied architecture and so um, you know, I'm, in a lot of ways, it's probably pretty similar to what you know students are doing at Hamilton, where they're not getting a BFA, they're getting a Bachelor's of Art, and they're taking some classes, or as you said yourself, maybe being a minor. Um, and that doesn't mean that you can't you know pursue art as a career. You just have to find uh, a path and uh, a way to get yourself to graduate school, probably, and then you can continue your education and um, you know either do something more commercial or uh, or teach potentially or become a successful artist. Studying art and making images and dealing with art and images to me is about learning. It's the way I learned as a child mostly. I was not a great student. It was a struggle for me in math and it was a very classical education I had in high school. Latin, math, uh, 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 but it was always a way for me to discover. Art is a way to learn and discover and to deal with ideas. Art is an idea and it is a way, it's a language to me. The same as English is or Latin or French or 
mathematics or uh, it is a language. It is a language. I think it's perfectly appropriate in a liberal arts college. And most of my students do not go on to be artists, but I have a feeling that, or I, I know that they loved, uh, they, they, they love learning about it and, and learning through it. Studying art is about looking and seeing and perception. And that's what I think it should be here or at an art school. I'm not so interested in careerism today. Careerism. Yeah, I don't, you know, what you do for a career <laughs> and whether you're going to be a successful artist and, and it is much more or less interesting to me than what you learned from art. How you how it how you understand and how it it's a part of your life. You know, it's very hard to say. I, I know most students today are very interested in how am I going to make a living. I understand that, but somehow I came out of a generation for some reason. Maybe it was easy. I didn't give that much thought. I wanted to do what I loved to do, believed in, and understood, and loved.